friend's farm near Geraldton for my holidays at seeding time and drive a tractor for him. Yeah. There was this fellow over in the United States years before had worked out how to join two conventional second-hand trailers together to make a four-wheel drive tractor. You take the front wheels off both of them and you mount the front of one onto the back of the other, big swivel pin, and you put some hydraulics in between the two of them so you can steer, and bingo, you've got yourself a cheap four-wheel drive tractor. Now Beck's looking at me here, <laughs> and, and it's like she's saying, Pastor Keith, this is my wedding day. <laughs> Why are we talking about tractors? Now suppose that you had two tractors that were 100 horsepowers each. You might imagine that when you join them together, you're gonna to have a machine that's gonna punch out 200 horsepower. But that's not what happens. What actually happens is you get twice the power of one plus a third. So those two tractors joined together like that would be putting out around about 233 horsepower. And that's quite amazing, right? It really is. But how does that happen? How can it possibly happen? Well, your text told us how it happens. Two are better than one because they give a better result for their work, for their toil. Yeah? And the thing that really, that I love about this text is that the scriptures knew this thousands and thousands of years before our scientists and engineers would be able to come to grips with that on a piece of paper. Solomon wrote these words more than 3,000 years ago. I read somewhere where two people working together are also able to achieve more than twice the output of one. And the proviso is that those two people have to be compatible. They have to be able to work together for the miracle to happen. You got it? Same is true for the tractors. They have to be compatible. And if not, then their power will just work against each other. In the final verse, we're hearing how a three-stranded cord is not easily broken. So there's a progression happening here. Two are better than one, but three are better than two. So long as the third chord is the right one. Oh, you look so nice! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Beck, always the friendly, outgoing, chirpy little girl growing up. We lived in Lock till Beck was about five and we had a bit of a grumpy old fella living across the road. Beck would pipe up in the morning when he'd see him, hello, Mr Dawson. And he had no option but to say hello back. We know you'll be great for him, him and his soul. Yes. However, can you just prove one thing? Oh. Time management skills. <laughs> Put your face. Robin and myself had three children, all have different attributes and personalities. Thomas, you're a fiercely independent, stubborn and competitive, whilst never forgetting that you're a country kid at heart. Beck is our family's ringleader, fun creator and biggest shit stirrer. Our family is never the same when she's not home. I've been fortunate to have a close bond with Tom, much of it due to our love of motorsport and generally making stuff. His independence while in his jeans also came from his motorsport pastime, where he started racing go-karts at the age of six. I would say to Tom, you race it and have all the fun, so now you wash it and prepare it for the next meeting. As a kid, 
He did all the work. Michael and Sally, you have both welcomed me into your family with open arms. It has been an amazing journey getting to know you and the four amazing daughters you have raised. After Beck and I's first initial visits to Adelaide and the farm, it did not take long to understand what makes Beck the amazing woman she is today. You have raised a gorgeous, compassionate, loyal and hard-working young woman, and you have instilled morals in her by raising her with the same faith you both share. You have taught her to stay true to what she believes in and not be afraid to stand on her own two feet. But more importantly, whilst doing so, being incredibly humble and finding time to help others along the way. From spending time with you both, I can only hope our marriage will be as strong and as fulfilling as yours. Mum and Dad, I couldn't ask for anything more in life than what you have both given and taught me. I have always looked up to you both. You're extremely hardworking, caring, honest and loyal, and your love for each other and us kids has never wavered. Together you have both shown me to treat others as I wish to be treated. If I had not learnt all these things, I would not be standing here today calling a woman like Beck my wife. I've always looked up to you both, and while you spent many weekends apart from each other so we could follow our dreams, your love has clearly only ever grown stronger. You have both set an example of what true commitment to each other and your family looks like. Dad, if I can be as good of a husband to Beck as you are to Mum, if I can find as much time for our family as you both did for yours, then I'll be one hell of a husband. I don't believe in love at first sight, but from that moment we met, I certainly felt it. You were the one, I had no doubts at all. You are so easy to get along with. It was a joy getting to know you, and the more time we spent together, it did not take long to fall completely in love with you. My life changed when I met you, Beck. You have become my best friend. There isn't a day that I, that I don't look forward to coming home to you. You always listen, understand, and console, like no one else can. Even the bad days are effortless when you are by my side. I was always sure I wanted to marry you, but when we came home to the farm during November 2020 and watched you play with your young nieces and nephews, cared for your grandmas and grandpa, and watched the same love you gave return in favour, I knew you were special. I couldn't imagine spending the rest of my life with anyone but you, and I'm so lucky to finally call you my wife. servant of God, and by the authority of the Commonwealth of Australia, declare them to be husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no one separate. Amen. Amen. And now, the first kiss of your wedded life. <laughs>